Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. No Other God by Neville Goddard. It's chapter 8 in Your Faith is Your Fortune. A couple things made me think about. One, the way we try to manifest signs. I think a lot of us get very worried about seeing signs, making sure we don't miss signs, constantly looking for signs, right? The outer world, constantly looking for something that we might miss. And one of the things that happens when we do that is by looking for signs, we tend to miss things. We tend to miss other important things. Maybe not signs, but certainly maybe paths in the road, right? Maybe debris in the road, right? You get out of the way of that thing that's about to hit you or that cyclist that's over there, right? Sometimes by looking for everything else, we're not paying attention to what really matters. So we spend a lot of time looking for signs and really let them happen is really the key. Let them happen. The process works the way it is. If it is your sign, which it is, you won't you won't miss it. I promise. You'll well, you'll just randomly look. Have you ever seen a shooting star? A lot of people, some people haven't. A lot of people have. For a shooting star to be visible, you have to look in the precise place in the freaking sky at the precise exact moment that that thing's like pee, burning up and gone. Gone. Milliseconds that it exists in view. To see a shooting star, it signifies perfection and timing. I think it's one of the reasons they happen. To be totally honest with you, it proves how weird that you could just randomly look in a weird direction and see a freaking shooting star. Because I was looking over there. Now, it is cool when you happen to be walking in the direction that one happens, but then think of the way that plays out. Things happen perfectly. Don't go around looking for shooting stars because you know what? You're going to have a sore neck by the freaking end of the day. Don't worry about it. You'll see one. Say, I'd like to see a shooting star, and a shooting star will happen. So a lot of us are looking for signs everywhere, and we're missing signs everywhere. One other key thing that comes out of this, fortunately it's a shorter chapter, but one other really key thing that comes out of this is the concept of the beggar. The beggar's the person that is always looking to the outer world for the handout, right? Looking out to everything else to give me. But a lot of us have our hand out to the world, and we don't realize no, no, you, you make that. It comes the other way. Someone's just going to walk up and hand it to you. You don't, you don't need to put your hand out as a beggar. Relax, sit back. It's going to be just given to you. Watch. You're creating it outward, bounces back. Wah, bah, wah, wah, wah. It bounces off the little bouncy thing, and it comes back at you tenfold, they say. I don't know. I haven't tried to measure it, but tenfold, right? Supposedly a lot more. It does, truly. If you send good stuff out, good stuff comes back, and it's generally magnified. So, bow, wah, 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 and it comes back at you. There's your, there's your money, someone handing you a check, someone handing you a job, someone handing you some means of creating income. Rather than being out there and going, give me, you could actually be like, no, I just sent it out, it's coming, checks in the mail, bam, thank you very much. So that's kind of how this one plays out. No other God, I mean, the whole book is into the I am thing, right? This whole book is fantastic. So I'm, I'm not trying to get out of the sink of it because the I am concept, your consciousness, everything's created from inside. It's what Neville's talking about so far. Here we are, chapter eight. And I'm pretty sure the dialogue, spoiler alert, continues in the same direction. So here we go. There's a couple quotes, from one from Isaiah chapter 44, verse six. I am the first and I am the last, and beside me is no God. So Goddard starts and continues, thou shalt have no other God beside me. As long as man entertains a belief in a power apart from himself, so long will he rob himself of the being that he is. Every belief in power apart from himself, whether for good or evil, will become the mold of the graven image worshipped. Meaning, when we look to outer and look to see what's going on out there and then make decisions about who we are, we're doing it backwards. We're deciding what we are relative to what we just created. So I just created this thing, and then now I'm saying, well, this is you forever. Kind of like a tattoo. <laughs> but you can't actually remove those, right? But again, I'm putting this graven image out there. I've put this power on this thing, this person. If they don't like me, if they don't like me, if they don't like me, something's going to happen, right? Or if I can't get this job at this company, or if I can't get my boss to like me, or if I can't get Joe to talk to me, right? Like, we put all this power outside of ourselves and instead of realizing that the discussion with Joe or that better behavior with the boss or that new job or that whatever the heck the first thing was I said, all of those things come from within ourselves. 
when we worship the idol, we, we're looking out before we look in, right? After it's created is the wrong time to look to the creator. You can't say after it's been created, I will never make anything good again. Well, what do you mean? Like, well, this is magnificent, right? So make another thing. Like, I bet you could make another thing. It's even better. No, that's impossible. That's the most magnificent thing ever. Well, try again. Who knows, right? It could happen. The beliefs in the potency of drugs to heal, diets to strengthen, monies to secure, are the values or money changers that must be thrown out of power. He can then unfailingly manifest that quality. This understanding throws out the money changers temple. Ye are the temple of the living God, and what agreement hath the temple of the God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. A temple made without hands. It is written, My house shall be called of all nations a house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. The potency of drugs, diets to strengthen. How many of us put our pressure outside of ourselves? Is it the diet that loses weight, or is it you following the diet? Which means you start internally to maybe not eat that thing, or maybe get yourself on a more structured thing, or maybe get yourself on a bit of an exercise kind of regimen to help get your metabolism sped up. Who knows? But it's all those things. But to think that it's the diet that's actually going to save you, it's not the diet. It's not the manifestation technique that creates. That doesn't matter. You could do any number of tech. What technique do you like? That's the one you should do. Keep doing it. Stop listening to other people saying, no, you should try this. Shut up. Don't. Right? This works for me. I don't need. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? If it's broke, yeah, try some other stuff, man, because that one probably doesn't work for you. And that's how it works. Yeah. Everybody and their mother would be like, oh, this is the way to do it. Watch. And you're like, it doesn't freaking work for me. Try something else, man. You might be that weird population percentage of people that this works better. And you'd be like, oh, man, I can't believe the results I've had. So try something else if it's not working. Keep doing what you're doing if it is working. But ultimately, it's not the freaking technique. No. It comes from inside. The technique's meant to inspire a feeling, a thought, a belief, a, 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 something that comes from inside that says, this is what's happening. I realize, I realize, I play a part in the creation of my reality. That comes from inside. We push it out through whatever mechanism. You know, we visualize something, and then we have a feeling about it. Some thought pops into our head, and we're like, yes, I totally want to do that. That would be wonderful, and we have a feeling about it. And again, that manifestation process begins. Period. And then we just keep driving north towards Sacramento. Like, I don't need a freaking sign every 50 feet, right? No. So the thieves who rob you are your own false beliefs. It is your belief in a thing, not the thing itself that aids you. There is only one power. I am he. Because of your belief in external things, you think power into them by transferring the power that you are to the external thing. Realize you yourself are the power you have mistakenly given to your outer conditions. The Bible compares the opinionated man to the camel who would not go through the needle's eye. The needle's eye referred to a small gate in the walls of Jerusalem, which was so narrow that a camel could not go through it until relieved of its pack. The rich man, that is, one burdened with false human concepts, cannot enter the kingdom of heaven until relieved of his burden any more than he could go through this small gate. And I love that little part there. You got a camel with a bunch of gear on it. You went out, maybe you found a bunch of gold, maybe you robbed a bunch of people. I don't know, because they're talking about this particular kind of bad person, right? The rich man. So he's got that perceived sort of man with a lot of stuff. He got a lot of stuff. It's all stuff to your camel. Well, you can't take that stuff with you through the, the needle, through the eye of the needle, which was that small, narrow gate. The only way that you could get through the small, narrow gate was to unload everything, have the camel walk through, because then he'd be like, all right, I can fit now. You jerk with all that stuff on me. Good Lord. He'd walk through, and then you'd have to pull all that stuff through and then put it back on the camel, and you could continue on your way. But you had to get through the needle's eye. It's one of the tricks, one of the many little cool metaphors that are hidden all over the place in many of the literatures that we have. Continuing, man feels so secure in his man-made laws, opinions, and beliefs that he invests them with an authority they do not possess. 
Satisfied that his knowledge is all, he remains unaware that all outward appearances are but states of mind externalized. When he realizes that the consciousness of a quality externalizes that quality without the aid of any other or many values and establishes the one true value, his own consciousness, that's the value. What we decide inside of ourselves, what we are inside regards to what, like, I was talking about this in the show I recorded live over the weekend. And it's that look in the mirror and the qualities that you feel like you're lacking or that you maybe look up to somebody. There's somebody that exemplifies what you would like to be. Like you want to be successful or famous or smart or whatever. Look in the mirror and say to yourself, I am smart or I am successful or I am famous. I am amazing in what I'm doing. I am Because when you do it and look in your eye and say it, the power of it is impressive too. You're using I am, so you're speaking directly to that internal portion of ourself, that consciousness part of ourselves. And I kid you not, you will feel goosebumps coming off you when you talk about how you are that thing. I am amazing. I am fantastic. I am someone that is worthy of this. I am, right? And you just start to feel it. And when you can feel it like that, your consciousness is it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Consciousness dwells within that which he is conscious of being. I am is the Lord and man, his temple, knowing that consciousness objectifies itself. Man must forgive all men for beings that which they are. Now, one thing that's really important about this is the whole us pushed out thing concept. Here's a place where he still talks about people as being people. Man must forgive all men for being that which they are. Now, it's true they are essentially us pushed out, so there's no reason to change them. But really, that consciousness comes from ourselves. Knowing that consciousness objectifies itself, man must forgive all men. Because if someone's externalized something, it's already too late. It's because you had it internalized yesterday. That's why right now, person's yelling at you. Or that's why right now, you're attracted to this tow truck driver, as I've used in other videos. Um, Yeah, it's kind of fun that way. Or that's why right now, you're doing the weird thing that you shouldn't be doing. Because of what you did yesterday. Stop looking at the results of what you did yesterday as proof of what's going to happen tomorrow. No, change what you did yesterday. If it's not working, if you're going down a bad path, if you're not getting the experience that you'd like, then then change your approach for sure. Change your beliefs. Look at what you're actually objectifying. Look at what you're doing inside. Are you constantly looking for road signs to show you? Are you maybe off course? Are you even on the right road anymore because you're so busy looking for signs that you've missed the fact that you went off on a detour, somehow ended off on a different freeway. You're about to drive into L.A., and trust me, this is going to add some time to your journey. Sometimes when we spend so much time looking outside of ourselves, we miss what we should just be kind of relaxed about. Put it this way. When you're able to relax about things, when you stop looking everywhere for that thing, When you just kind of cruise, you'll notice just every so often you'll be like, huh, and you'll see a freaking shooting star. It happens. I'm not looking for a shooting star. That wasn't my intention. I always love seeing them, and I saw one even not that long ago. I see them every so often, and it is one of the most amazing, fantastic experiences of my life every time they happen. I just, I love them. They're so freaking cool. Love them. Beautiful, too, especially when they're different colors, right? Because it depends on what's in them. Like, if they're really heavy and iron, I think they're reddish or whatever the hell. Anyway, it's fantabulous. So that being said, You will see the signs. Trust me, you'll be fine. Do your technique. Enjoy yourself. Relax. It's one thing we all forget to do is to relax and enjoy the ride. It's happening. You did the stuff you're supposed to do. Chill about how many signs you need to see. Just relax and know that you're heading in the right direction. Let it unfold. See the signs when they pop up every 50 miles rather than needing one every single day. And what I mean by that is I should get a text message from them 14 times a day. I need to see their numbers, their names. I need to see the street names. I need to see something that reminds me of them every day. Like, that's not necessary. It's going to happen. Relax. And the fact that you didn't see his initials anywhere today, the fact that you didn't see fives, fives, which is his favorite number, I, it doesn't matter. It's okay. It's okay. You're still heading in that direction. Relax. You'll see a Sacramento sign soon. I promise. Just relax. That's all. Enjoy. There's some other cool stuff going on around here. And besides, on the drive, there's this, this town that smells awesome because it's like a dairy farm. It's wonderful. We've talked about it before. It's just one of the, the joys of the journey. <laughs> 
He must realize that all are expressing, without the aid of another, that which they are conscious of being. Peter, the enlightened or disciplined man, knew that a change of consciousness would produce a change of expression. Instead of sympathizing with the beggars of life at the temple's gate, he declared, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. Now said with the little the parentheses, the silver and gold have I none, or I don't have any gold for you guys, right, for thee, but such as I have, which he says is kind of the consciousness of freedom. So Peter's saying, like, I got some knowledge, consciousness of freedom, how to do that, and with this consciousness of freedom, I'll give that to you, beggar. Here you go. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for the rest of his life. Stir up the gift within you. Stop begging and claim yourself to be that which you decide to be. Do this and you will jump from your crippled world into the world of freedom, singing praises to the Lord. I am. Far greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is the cry of everyone who finds his awareness of being to be God. Your recognition of this fact will automatically cleanse the temple. Your consciousness of the thieves and robbers, restoring you to that dominion over things, which you lost the moment you forgot the command, thou shalt have no other God beside me. Purely put, that last sentence basically says, for all of us, looking to the outer world for verification, you are putting another God before you. You are placing it outside of yourself. For what you see outside of yourself is what was inside of yourself yesterday. If you like what you see it's outside of yourself, continue it. If you don't like what you see outside yourself, change it. If something didn't happen outside of yourself, fine. Enjoy it. Go one more day. Maybe you'll see a day, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit further down the road where you're going to see that Sacramento sign. Just because you didn't see something does not mean you're failing. It is actually contrary to that. Sometimes you have to be just okay with the fact that there's a stinky town coming up and it's not going to mention Sacramento for another 25 miles. It's just how it is. The journey will have interesting steps along the way. But I assure you, I assure you, you continue the internal consciousness work. You continue to realize that what's going on inside of you is what will be objectified outside of you. That you are a movie projector and what you experience is this movie screen. That you control the film that's loaded in the projector. That you control the way it's played. That you control when it pauses. That you control when it speeds up. You are the producer and the director of your movie. You hand people scripts, they play their parts, they come and go. That's how it works. You create things inside first, then it shows up outside. If you don't like what you're seeing outside, change what you're doing inside. If you like what you're seeing outside, keep doing what you're doing inside. If nothing happened for a day, that's okay. That's probably a good thing in the big picture. Again, if you're going off course, trust me, you're going to see off course messages. You're going to see things that seem weird. You're going to see things that aren't going right. A third party, I don't consider that, by the way. A lot of people, I can just see the question right now. I don't consider third parties necessarily to mean you're off track. I actually see those sometimes being very significant in that sometimes by dating another person, you learn really cool stuff. I dated someone that was actually awesome in a couple ways, but was super duper crazy in about 15 ways right? And we broke up seven times, seven times, and we got back together. You can only imagine how amazing things must have been for us to get back together seven times. And we almost got back together an eighth time, but I told her, I go, you are one of the most amazing people that is horrible for me. I cannot get back together with you. I am sorry. And that was, that would have been the eighth time. And I was like, done. So again, we choose when to stop the battles, and we choose that if we don't like what we're seeing, then do something different. I did something different, and I created a much better outcome after that situation. That was right when I got back from Tennessee. I was all jacked up, man. It was crazy times. It was good, though. It was very fun. But that being said, putting too much attention on the outside world to decide whether or not you're doing it right is okay, right? Like, if you like what you're doing, keep doing it. Don't like what you're doing, change. Nothing happens. It's okay. 
It's okay. But I think a lot of us panic when nothing happens. And we start to question everything. We start to wonder if we're on the right path. We start to wonder, am I actually driving to Sacramento? And doing that, sometimes you end up, like I said, leaving the road. No, now you're not actually going to Sacramento at all. No, because you're so worried about the fact that you missed something. Now you're missing something. Relax. You're doing this right. If you got good signs yesterday, and if you got good signs a week ago, if you got good signs a month ago, I mean, you should probably be getting some stuff every so often. I don't know. Once a month seems a little low, maybe. Right? Once a week? Maybe. All right. Right? Whatever. Whatever it works out to with you. It might seem daily. I mean, I, I see some cool stuff, but I got kind of a lot of irons in the fire, if you will. Right? So I don't know. I don't know what happens when it's just one thing. It doesn't matter. Keep focusing on it. Keep knowing you're going in the right direction. If you've not seen anything bad, assume. Assume. Assumption. Power of assumption. God it talks about it all the time. Assume. You're going in the correct direction. <laughs> Just assume it. You don't have any evidence? All right, that's fine. Assume for now until you get evidence. If you get evidence that looks like things are sucky, all right, well, uh, maybe consider looking at what's going on inside. Do I have some weird beliefs? Am I uh, uh, entertaining fears? Uh, am I thinking about a third party a lot? Because I might have created it in that regard. Sometimes a third party isn't a good thing, but they still learn lessons. I mean, it still ultimately works out well as you're learning to control your internal dialogue right? But what's going on inside of ourselves? That's what he's talking about. Have no other gods before you. Place it inside of yourself. Realize that I am is the creator, that is the God, that is the Father, that is Jehovah, that is Yahweh, that is uh, whatever, Vishnu. I don't even know if that's right, so I'm sorry if I misquoted that. Someone keeps saying that name, and they're being really sweet about it, so I hope I didn't do any disrespect there. But that being said, realize that that power is inside of yourself. It was given to you by the creator, by source, by whoever, we call it. That's where it comes from. And that's what we're using. This is your power to use. This is your world to create. If you don't like the way it is, change it. It's up to you. Dan Radio Style.